but so horrible. Okay, Ooh. don't use it. Kathy Griffin told me if I don't want something used on camera to sing the Beatles oh, while nice. I say it. Nice. So they can't clear it. Smart. That's really smart. Yeah. When I didn't want to be on camera, I literally would just pull my tits out and then all the cameras would go away. It's like perfect. That's never happened. Usually the cameras come when I pull my tits out, but. If I ever do All Stars again, I'll have one of those titty plates yeah. on and I'll be like. <laughs> Hi, it's Trixie and welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Today we're on episode eight and we have the reigning queen in the house, the body, the diva, the face, a goddess. Sasha is in the house here. Woo! Ah! Sasha Colby, congratulations very late on winning Drag Race. Yay! Thank you. How does it feel? Oh my gosh, it feels correct. It feels nice. No, um, winning has been amazing. I highly recommend it. You know? <laughs> It's uh, everything it's cracked up to be. It's everything and more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've never lost Drag Race. Have you lost pageants or competitions before? I have. I lost <laughs> Miss, <laughs> like, Miss Congrats. Continental. Congratulations for winning. Let's have you lost? Time lost. Can, can we talk about how much of a loser you are? Yeah. <laughs> Did you make any extravagant self-purchases to celebrate your win? Oh, uh, you know, not really. I mean, drag has just become such a monster lately. That Why'd you look at me more? when you said that? Well, I mean, <laughs> in the dictionary. <laughs> Bam. One of the nice things about winning or making some money in drag is, you know, at certain times in our lives, choosing between like tights and yes. foundation. I mean, the, actually the thing that I did that I love the most is I buy in bulk now. Like I never do not have toilet paper or like, you know, like, or toilet or, or, or like paper towels. I, I thought you were gonna An say apple. I buy Dragon Bulk. I wasn't expecting you to go straight <laughs> oh, no. to Home Goods. No, straight to like Costco. I think you're the only person to ever win that no one was ever bitter about. Oh. All the drag queens were like, yeah. yeah Dress yeah. mistress? <laughs> <laughs> think of it this way, she started bitter, she ran bitter. She, I know, yeah. she's consistent. She's amazing. Yeah. Any other thoughts about reigning? Any other Ooh. Uh, tips off the bat to who might win this season? Ooh, tips. Tips is pay attention to what's going on when you do win. Like you can get really caught up in trying to, you know, stay afloat and try to do all your responsibilities, but really take time. And hopefully you have some good friends around you that allow you to like stay humble. Yeah. That's important. And buy toilet paper in bulk. I mean, oh gosh. Ooh, a bidet? <gasps> well, now you're getting a little too fancy. Oh, that's know, All Stars yeah. money. Yeah, that's All Stars. Yeah. I haven't gotten that yet. Do you remember how we met? Oh God, no, I don't. You had moved and I always heard about you and it was like, oh my God, Sasha Colby, Sasha Colby. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were doing, do you remember the Neverland Olympics <gasps> ball? Olympics ball? There was Neverland like Olympics themed ball. I was like, I don't know. I was dressed as some lame ass tennis player or something, but you did Bitch Better Have My Money and they oh, shot yeah. money at you. Oh yeah, we were like on, you were on a like scaffolding. scaffolding. Yeah. And I had never seen <laughs> so much nudity and long, long hair. Uh, and I think it was your real hair even. Yeah. And it was whipping and whipping and they were rocketing fake money. Maybe real money. Yes, I remember the fake money. And no, it was I, fake money. I was in the back of the house watching you and your eyes and your skin and the other drag queens were all up there watching you. Was, like, oh. was it like Queen Beho there too? Was she there? Yes. She was there, I love her. Love. Uh, anyway, drag, obviously drag. you have an incredible memory of me and I left a huge impression. Anyway, well, you don't remember that night at all, do you? No. No, I don't remember a lot of nights. <laughs> it's about Chicago's fun that way. <laughs> Chicago was crazy. Yeah. So we're basically at the halfway point of the season. Mm -hmm. What do you think of these season 16 queens? Pretty good. I mean, I'm liking the girls. The wild thing is the branding off the bat from like the first episode was so, like the bananas, the burger fingers, like they definitely came in knowing who they are. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of food branding. A lot of food branding. If Nymphia retired to go be a banana farmer, I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like that is just the trajectory of her life, right? Not a bad situation. Although I, I read on the internet that if you eat too many bananas, you can die. Because your body can like OD on potassium, apparently. Okay, okay. If you eat too much, <laughs> she might die too. Well, if that were true, I don't think <laughs> you'd be sitting dead. there right now. We'd be dead. We'd both be is dead. Is this hell? No, Bianca was here, it was hell. Last week, we said goodbye to Megami after she went home following the Rusical. Meanwhile, Plasma received her second win. Did you enjoy doing the Rusical on season 15? Yeah, I actually did. I I got to like be a guy, I got to be Carl, so that was fun. And there wasn't really a lot character-wise to do, so I actually just got to watch everyone else crumble, which was really nice. Now, Plasma fought for her winning role. When you competed, were you in the mindset that you'd be happy with any role, or were you like, no, I want this? 
uh, I, I was good with any role. I just didn't want to be the one fighting over like the lead. And I felt that was already happening. So right. I, I could just kind of step back. I was that one in the middle of Lux and Lucy and just like trying to dodge and like not feel the daggers because it was it was intense. There's a lot of drama. It, uh, it, it ebbed and flowed for sure. The girls were unhinged. So one day they could have been happy the next second, babe. But honestly, <laughs> doing drag for a while, that's every dressing yeah. room. Yeah, see, every I just day. like it. I like make friends with that, you know. Because I, I don't want total peace. I want entertainment. No, I want chaos, and I want you to look over there. Yeah. <laughs> Sasha, are you ready to talk about my favorite challenge? Oh God, snatch game. Oh God. <laughs> In pageant world, this is what you would call like when like it's like the bathroom number. You know, like when it's like so unbearable to watch that you have to go to the bathroom, you go to the bar to get a drink. Mm. This whole episode is like that for me. I get so nervous because it's like everyone's gonna suck. Well, you've done Snatch Game, I've done it. Yeah. I know why I have struggles mm -hmm. watching it because it's a little, I'm a little shell-shocked, you know? I'm one of those like veterans who can't be around a balloon popping. I'm yeah, yeah. Like, oh! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I find with Snatch Game, like you have to be like weirdly loose. Yeah. But focused focused on exactly what Rue is saying because the volley is so subtle yeah you know and if you can find it and catch it because she's she's helping you that's she, the weird thing she's helping you the whole time watching you say that to the camera she's helping you she is I promise she's there to help Maya has consecutively sent home a couple girls at this point what do you think her energy at the top of the episode? She's kind of feeling herself. Oh, she's feeling it. I mean, that's like the the Miami pageant girl, you know? She's feeling good, she's feeling safe, and so she can like throw maybe a dagger or two. She's a flipper and a jumper and a splitter. Yeah. Are you one of those jump off the bus bitches? No, ma'am. No. No, this uh, uh, silicone and concrete don't mix. <laughs> you hit that floor to look like someone stomped on a toothpaste tube. I, oh my gosh. This is kind of a shady season. Which is yeah. saying something after your season. <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. think of the shade? The shade is fun. The shade is a lot of unsolicited shade though, right? Girl. My mama. This is the season of, It's like the, they're all Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Just give unsolicited advice. Girl, they are going door to door. <laughs> Plain Jane is going door to door with her reads and saying, have you heard the good news? Have you heard the good sister? <laughs> <laughs> Every time sister. Jane calls someone sister. I don't believe it at all. Sister, she says sister, but what she's really saying is like, bitch. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> if Jane is like, you're my sister, I'm like, well, she's gonna kill me. Wow, wow. Do you think plain Jane is going for Miss Congeniality? She's kind of trying to, she's trying. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I thought you were gonna be like, oh, bitch. I just you imagine, no. <laughs> I think her game is like kind of all over the place. Like she wants to be the honest bitch and like she wants to be that girl, but then she's got this, you know, immunity and people yeah. are being nice to her. And you know, at the end of the day, we all just have crippling desire for people to love us. That's why we're in this drag. So at a certain point, she's kind of like, oh, do I be nice? Like, yeah. I think if it was up to plain, she'd eliminate everyone in one swoop. Yeah, if that was an elimination potion, oh my gosh. She would have given it to someone already. Brr. Mix it, make jello shots with it, hand <laughs> it out. I just like, you know, if, I'm, if my drag isn't bothering you, and I'm competing against you, I'm gonna let you think you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honey, you're doing great. Love your hair, I hope you win. So the next day, Morphine recounts the story of when Tsunami stole her mm. man at the club. Honey. Sasha, are drag queens ever to be trusted with men? Absolutely not. I don't Absolutely think so either. Not, no. not their man, not my man. Yeah. Um, they all look like men, so. <laughs> I know, they should just get on a drag and look at themselves. I mean, if you're trying to find a man. <laughs> man in trying the mirror. to find a man. Man in the mirror, babe. <laughs> man in the mirror, babe. Man in the mirror, babe. Next, we see RuPaul enter and announce that for the mini challenge, the library is open. Are you a fan of the reading challenge? No, oh, this is like the hardest episode uh, when I did it. Like the reading challenge and the snatch game was just, get me through it. You're not good at reading? Get me through it. Um, not when I'm told to. You Unsolicited reads. Oh, name. down. Yeah, I can do that in a heartbeat. Do you have any favorite reads of all time from Drag Race? Legs and Dairy. Legendary looks like leg and dairy. Oh! Girl. That was great. Juju B. Juju. Mama. Same season, a nice throwback to Jessica, who I believe didn't have 
quite the same handle on the English language at the uh -huh, time. Uh -huh. She was like, you are fat, girl. <laughs> and that was the whole week. It was so good. But Jessica could pretty much do anything and I would be into it. Hi, Jessica. I mean, I'm getting the avocados. I'm getting the guacamole. Totally. I'm getting the tortilla chips. All of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, tr I tried them. Were they great? They're good. They're, They're actually really good. good. I also love something. I think Violet told Katya you should make... In this competition, you should make like your hairline and recede. <laughs> make like your hairline and recede. <laughs> I did love that. Who was the best reader in season 15? Uh, Lucy was pretty vish. She was pretty vicious. It was good. She's quick. She is. She's quick. And like joke-minded. Yeah. You know what was the funniest though? It was Malaysia. Malaysia had like a rhyme for every read. So it's like she was rapping, like dissing you. It was fun. Oh, do you remember when Coco Montre said to Katya, I can see you from my house? <laughs> In like a weird sing-songy Mother Goose voice. And I was like, what in the Sarah Palin? <laughs> it was so wild. Bad reads, they they linger, they linger in the air mm -hmm. and like crystalline. Mm -hmm. It's really fierce. Yeah. Like asbestos. Did anybody stand out to you in this reading batch of girls? Not surprisingly, Plain Jane was good. She was good at throwing the shade. It's almost like she does it all the time. Yeah. Tsunami was fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just like a little silent. You could tell like the New York, you know, the New York girl came out. You know, the New York girls, what I love about them is they they live on the microphone. Yeah. Their brain is very yeah, like, they're very ready quick. for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I don't know, a Midwest girl, I rarely use a microphone. No, no, they don't give us a mic. No. Go out there. Barely gave us a stage. Or a light. <laughs> or pay. <laughs> girl. Like. <laughs> Tsunami Muse takes the win. Hey! Congrats, girl. Uh, it's fierce to win the reading challenge. I mean, that's a it great is. thing to win. It's good to have. Rue explains that for the maxi challenge, the queens will be competing in the Snatch Game. Mm -hmm. Sasha, please tell me you found Snatch Game to be hard. Yes. Oh Thank my you. gosh. That was the one that I was the most worried about doing. Yeah. It's a snatch game, you know? The 97% chance fail rate, you know, it's it's real. Yeah, there's just like, it's just how do you fail? On your ass, right? Because it's funnier. Yeah. Did you ever consider anyone else besides Jan Crouch? I brought one more person. I brought uh, Robin Leach from the Lifestyles of Rich and Famous. Okay. Yes, champagne wishes and caviar drains. No, that was it. That's why I didn't do it. <laughs> I also think like bad accents is good. It's so good, you gotta sit in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just don't know if I could have like held on to that accent long enough. Did you have any strategy in Snatch Game on how to just get through it? Just get through. I knew like, you know, you had three rounds. If you could have like something to say three times to Rue, that would just be enough. But I knew like there were so many girls like, they were gonna bomb. Like there was gonna be more bombing than normal. So yeah, just uh, don't be like the biggest bomb. It's almost better to shoot for the middle on mm -hmm. this game and just surprise yourself. Yeah. Okay, so if you were to do it again, would you have done anything differently? I would have been funnier. No. Um, I don't know if there was anything to do differently. It goes so fast, you know? Like, I don't even think I remember the questions that she was asking me, you yeah. know? It, it was just kind of get through it. It was white noise. So we start to hear who the queens are gonna impersonate, like Nymphia as Jane Goodall, Tsunami as the Gold Tooth Fairy, Morphine as Anna Delvey. Before we actually talk about how they did, what are you thinking of the choices? Uh, I thought the choices were good. I thought that they were all over the place. I thought like something like Jane Goodall or the Gold Tooth Fairy, you could really just take a lot of liberties and do whatever you want. You could be an agent of chaos at that point. Yeah. Might just be chaotic though. <laughs> totally. I love like Santa or yeah. Jesus. Like, yeah, okay. the devil. You know, Mary Magdalene. Yeah. I If I could do it all over again, I think I would have picked something like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, like a fun uh, historical character. Yes. That I could just, you know, like John Wilkes Booth in. Or Lady Bunny. <laughs> someone from a long time ago. Yeah, someone fictional. Yeah. Rue enters with All Stars 1 winner, Chad Michaels. Sasha, is Chad the ultimate Cher? I mean, she's Cher. I think her legal name now is Cher. Honestly, I think someday Cher is scrolling Twitter and she gets to chat and she goes, Why do I look at <laughs> Yeah. She's like, I don't remember wearing that. Oh. Yeah. I saw a picture with Cher next to Chad and Chad looked more like Cher than Cher did. Yeah. Maya is thinking about her initial choice to play Tiffany Pollard. Do you think the walkthrough with Rue can impact a queen's thinking? Yeah. I think Tiffany Pollard is so funny, but I don't think they thought she was funny. I think she could have proved them wrong. You know, I think she could have really killed it. Yeah. It's hard because you want to do somebody funny and memorable. Yeah. 
But how do you put your spin on Tiffany? It's, yeah, that's hard. When you are making fun of a funny person. Right. Yeah, that's even harder than like, it's easier to make fun of like a straight person. Well, it's always funny. <laughs> it's always better. It's always better. Person. Or it's supposed to be. Yeah. Megan McCain. Okay. <laughs> So let's talk Snatch Game. Here's who everyone played. Q is Amelia Earhart. Tsunami is the Gold Tooth Fairy. Mm -hmm. Dawn is Megan McCain. Safira is James Brown. Plasma is Patti Lapone. Morphine is Anna Delvey. Maya is Trina's cousin Shaquita. <laughs> Nymphia is Jane Goodall. And Plain Jane is Yarlena Kaleusha. Who stood out to you? Oh, wow. Okay. I know that Elena Carly. You do? I follow her on Instagram. Like, okay. She's like a bodied out goddess. She looks cool. And I thought Jane did really good at being that kind of aloof Russian moment. It was yeah. it was fitted for her character. Same thing with Maya. Maya was kind of leaned into the girls that she grew up with or the girls that she's around in Miami, which is easy for her to like fall in. And if you don't want to break your character, you do somebody you know, right? Right. And the physicality helps, like, Sephira to James Brown. Oh, so Sephira, good. Sephira's not, like, a little 100-pound, little, like, 12-year-old <laughs> girl. Sephira's like, all right, if we're going to do man drag, yeah. I'm going to do the shoulders. I'm yeah. Gonna... She did a good James Brown. Yeah, I love the little isms. And she picked up what Rue said. Like, first off the bat, Rue said something that was, like, a pun on one of James Brown's songs. And she caught it. And that's yeah. what you want to do. She called back to RuPaul seeing her in 1969. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, that's a that's a jinx playbook kind of thing. You it's know? pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else was a fave? Those three stuck out to me. Yeah, everyone was interesting. <laughs> everyone else was very interesting. <laughs> this is your um like I'm current reigning answer. Yeah. Everyone was interesting. Were... <laughs> I will say, this is an unpopular opinion. I know we're supposed to believe that Nymphia's Jane Goodall <laughs> was off the beaten path. Okay. A bit, but I live. You're a stand. I lived. You're a stan. I loved when it first got a laugh, and as it got less laughs, I laughed more. Yeah, I I love the commitment. I love the makeup. I well, she looked like Grandmother Willow from Pocahontas. Girl, <laughs> really though, really. I really liked it. I loved it. The weirder it got, the more monkeys that came out. Oh my gosh. And I love that it. How was she point, speaking monkey? Mary, she wasn't even doing jokes. After no. a certain point, she was Greta Thunberg. <laughs> she was just talking about environmentalism. The, the environment, the planet, and Rue was like, okay, I'll recycle. Yeah. Next up, like, yeah. I wonder, is Jane Goodall alive? Jane Goodall is alive, I believe. Does she watch Drag Race? I think Jane Goodall's gonna watch it and she's gonna look at the screen and be like, they're gagging for my <laughs> like, I did, and then, boo, 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 you know, whatever. <laughs> I love Nymphia's, the same way I love like Farrah's roast. Yeah. Sometimes when things go off the rails, it's almost like the edible hits during Drag Race. Ooh. You're like, what is happening? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Special shout out, I thought the Amelia Earhart was really good. I liked Amelia Earhart. I liked Amelia Earhart because she was like colloquialized, like, you know, known very well, but not known who she is. Like, some people know who Jane Goodall is. You know, some people know who Anna Delvey is, but right. everyone knows who Amelia Earhart is. Yes, and no one knows who she talks like, sounds no. like, so you have a lot of freedom. Yeah. I love when she was like, RuPaul, I was the first woman to eat a bag of peanuts on a plane. I was like, <laughs> you better work, bitch. <laughs> that is so stupid. Like, go off. So who struggled for you? Struggle for me was Dawn. I didn't really get any of Dawn. And I think Dawn is so funny. When she was explaining May Megan McCain, I was like, okay, it's gonna be irreverent, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be clever. But I don't know, she just decided to make Megan like a gay boy. Yeah, she yeah. also never mentioned her father. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy The View. Same. And I enjoy- There was so much yes. of Megan McCain that you could do. Just like getting frustrated about things or yeah. or like, you know, some sort of storyline where she was getting progressively progressive, you know? Yeah, or like maybe being a, a light Nepo baby. Or, yeah. You know, there's so yeah. many options. Yeah. I was honestly, spoiler alert, surprised Dawn was safe. I thought it was pretty- Yeah. And I say that as someone with, who's- with, with, with the edit, because you know how the edit is, you know? But yeah. the edit looked like it was wah wah. Yeah. What's that feeling in the workroom like the day after Snatch Game? Well, let's talk about when you're in the car going to the workroom and you know who did bad because you know who's listening to their music. Girl, can I tell yeah. you what I did the day, the day- I, I listened to my music. <laughs> Thank you. The day after um, Snatch Game, I remember I was walking around the workroom going like, I think I did good. Wait. And like waiting for anyone Wait. to be like, yeah, girl. Yeah, you're gay. 
Do you think the queens are eager to get Plains immunity potion? Uh, with this challenge, I think so. I think anybody would find that uh, very desired, you know? Just to relax for a second. Now, you're not a fortune teller or a, a future pr predictor. Do you foresee our friend Miss Congeniality, Plain Jane, giving away that potion? I, I'm not a fortune teller. But I can read a person. <laughs> yeah. I can read a girl, honey. Um, and I just don't see anyone giving someone else a shot, a spot. I, I think that's like not at all. insane. In season seven, I gave Ginger a call, a phone call home. And thinking back, I'm like, I could have ordered a pizza. I yeah. Done anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called movie phone. Like I could have done yeah. anything. If you had immunity, would you give it away? No, I would probably have been using it right now, just in case. It would, it would have been like a Zafira, like, yeah. just, just in case. Yeah. I wonder if you could just like sit out Snatch Game and be like, potion. Oh, I'm just could I? Home. Oh my gosh, yeah. Before the runway, we learn about Safira's backstory. What do you think of Safira's performance so far this season? You know, I love Safira. I think she's she gives me like old pageant girl. She gives very settled, this like quiet confidence. Someone like Plain Jane wants to, you know, show how how good she is and you know show how bad other people are. Where Safira would just let you like dig your own grave, you know? Yeah. And she's like really good, but she doesn't have to say anything. Yes. Yeah. It's smart because you don't want to be like. I mean, not like you don't want to be Nymphia, but Nymphia is so strong and so out there. Like, it's like people are like this already, where yeah. you can just kind of coast, but still be good in the judge's eyes, but not really feel that you're ruffling any feathers. Totally. You really get through. And Safira has that, you know, like veteran drag queens, like, oh. Safira, you can read, like, this is a professional drag queen. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. done everything yeah. and she's not scared and the of anything. The looks are amazing. My I God. mean, every time. Every it's time. it's refreshing and lovely to see. Yeah. Okay, let's talk runway. Category is Dancing Queen. Sasha, is it safe to say you would have loved this runway? Oh, I would have loved it. Maybe I'll do like the hula. Uh, so, oh. No. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be different. I, that's what I liked about this runway. A lot of the girls took a lot of liberties. I think there was just two that were the same. The ball yeah. And dancing, but like even that, both of them did it well. What would I have done? I kind of think I might have done ballet. Yeah. Like a super puss. I like see big like a bun Michael head. Flatley Lord of the Dance for you. Like a full on clogging moment. Ooh, or Shen Yun. Oh my gosh, Shen Yun. I don't know what they do in that show, but I know that they do this at some point. Yeah. I would love Hula for you. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe with some reveal element because it's a lot yeah. of skin. Yeah. So you can do like a. <laughs> Fire. Fire. Do they allow that? Can you do anything like that? No. Have you ever tried? No, no, I'm not allowed to play with matches. Well, we've seen you put alcohol in your mouth. I think you just spit yes. it out. <laughs> but I don't see a reality where we put I booze in your mouth and you spit it out. I never, yeah. never. You'd be like, oh, oh, well, that was actually really good. Mm. Was that Jack Fire? <laughs> wow. First up, we have Q doing the robot. You know, that's fun. That's different. The robot, you can like take so many fun liberties with that. And she looks great. This this takes me back to Bob in season eight in that like Amazon yeah. bodysuit. Yeah. <laughs> she wishes bitch because I mean she got the Amazon and then she did things on top of that. Girl. Which is great. She bought it. You know Amazon. she made this also. This is a great look. I mean, Q had a great snatch game. Yeah. And this is a great look. Yeah. Q is one of those queens where if she was a performer locally, every time she was in a show, I would look forward to seeing what Yeah, I would have to like half in drag go on the side of the stage and watch it. You have the robe on with half the wig and you're like. Yeah. And then like, yeah. Yeah. Up next we have Tsunami Muse in Salsa. I love I love the color story on her. She looks really great. Girl. She looks beautiful. Beautiful. I, I don't know if you're watching this, Miss Muse, this color on you. Yes. And I love monochromatic. Mm -hmm. So it's monochromatic, but with all these activated little pieces. Yeah. She looked beautiful. And like, especially with her skin color, just to have that right color that makes you pop more. Yeah. She is a beautiful drag queen. Yeah. Next up, we have Nymphia Wind. This is actually Japanese buta. Uh, what? <laughs> this is insane. It is. It is insane. The construction of that gown is incredible. Like all the lace, all the little tears and the layers, it's beautifully done. The corset is cinched to its life. Yeah. She just understands like proportion and from afar, how that looks really beautiful, you know? Yeah. When you're competing with really tiny queens like that and they have the nerve to put on a corset, mm -hmm. I almost want to walk up I with the scissors and just snip the laces yeah. and be like. Yeah. yeah. The way that she even extended her head, like made her head look bigger to yeah. pull her up was smart because it would have looked really like. Squash. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, I've never seen things from Michael's crafts 
flower section look that beautiful. <laughs> Not even a reed. No. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I, how did you pack that? I know. When did you put that together? I have no Was idea. Was that day of? Was that just sitting in your luggage? Girl, I'm from season seven where Jasmine Masters brought bread. <laughs> we had other priorities. <laughs> we had other priorities. <laughs> this is why Nymphia is my daughter. Oh, and my mother and my daughter. sister. Don has the polka. Don, that's perfect for Don. The polka. Totally. Like it's there's always a little bit of like woodland creature to yes. her. You know, like she's definitely looks like she woke up and she got dressed by like animals, like cartoon Disney characters. Definitely. I'm from Krivitz, Wisconsin, which has a sister city in Germany, and we have like polka festivals. There's a lot of polka in Wisconsin. There is. The only reason I know this is because Home Alone. John Candy, he was the polka king. And he's from, and he's from Wisconsin. <laughs> he was, yes. yes, but I love polka. It's, it's a funny little music. And this look, she kind of made polka, which can be kind of corny, really chic. Yeah, she does have that eye. Definitely think it's like the colors and the proportions. She knows how to make it look not costumey. Like, it's yeah. just a little more to not look like spirit. Yeah. You know? I think it's hard when queens are that short and tiny too. Oh, they it's can, so hard when they're so small and but, so uh, tiny. But I mean, they can get lost in costumes. Yes. And Dawn doesn't get lost. I in just costumes. like her to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> get lost, bitch. <laughs> Up next, Sephira Cristal work. Ah, oh, I loved. I love the majorette. I love, you know, it's her culture. And I love that everything was to scale to make her look like a little like brat stall. Like she painted like a brat stall. The hair is a little bigger to make her look like, you know, a like little a little bigger. I mean. Her hair is a mushroom, is a nuclear experience on her head. That is a, Monet Exchange is in that hair. <laughs> Girl, totally. <laughs> That's more hair than Monet Exchange has worn in her life. No, yeah. That's usually on Monet's back, no? <laughs> <laughs> she looks so good. I love these colors on her. Yeah, the royal colors are perfect. I love the fringe. I love how everything was a little more exaggerated. I, I did enjoy her delivery and the whole overall. Yeah. Very great. Next up, we have Plasma. She is presenting Tap. Okay. Execution. Incredible. Crazy. Costume, uh. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's a, it, like, I, it could have been a little tighter, a little more 42nd Street, maybe. Yeah. You know, it felt like it was gonna have a reveal. Yes. But it, the tapping yeah. was tapping on everyone's asses. I, I'm just I'm wondering what's under there. Yeah. Yeah. Up next, we have Morphine giving us flamenco. Oh, mama with the kata, the face. I just. The face, I mean. I know it's not a beauty competition. Oh. Uh, but when girls walk out and their face looks like this, my she just gives out. sex. It's just, she'll take your man. Yeah, she will steal your man. And charge you for it. Thank you. Oh yeah. She could pretty much come out there in a paper bag and just take a full blown diarrhea, like, and I'd be like. It's just so pretty. It's so everything. pretty. And then the, the whole costume is great. She's one of those queens too, I know you know what I'm talking about, where you know they're gonna look even better in person. Oh God, that just makeup, smack them. That makeup is even better in person, yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Goddess, this look, no notes. Maya, 90s hip hop. I'm gonna let you take the lead here. Maya. I just wanted to know like what 90s girl this was. You know, like there were references, but I, I maybe I just needed something a little more like fly girl. What, well, I'm not a 90s hip hop expert, mm -hmm, believe mm -hmm. it or not. But I I guess I would have been, responded more to like a clear Missy reference. Yeah. Or maybe a, uh, like a TLC girl group vibe. Yeah, like the TLC with the big hats and like the big jewelry, like just that, that fun. It just seems, like you could be doing it. You could be doing "Don't Stop Now" right now. You know, but girl, she could be at medieval times right now. Yeah. Listen, as always, she looks beautiful. Yeah. I just didn't totally get it. She sells. She it, sells course. it. Maya, we stand you. We love you. I love you, Maya. You know I love you. Plain Jane in Latin ballroom. Exquisitely done. That outfit it. is exquisite. You can just tell. That's money. That beads. I am a pageant whore. Like I'm a bead slut. Yeah. I mean that is good stuff. And all this. It looks like Monique V. It's like liquid. It's liquid, it's beautiful. And she's Amazing. a ballroom dancer. Yeah. So for me, I kind of wanted a little more like ballroom, like a little more strength if it was salsa ballroom dancing, you know? Sure. It felt like she was modeling in gown. She looks great. She looked beautiful. I don't know how to say this diplomatically. Playing out of drag is a man. Uh-huh. And for her to show this much skin and such mm. a tiny hair yeah. oh. and still look great. When a drag queen can like show the shoulders Girl. and it's like a bird. Girl. If I wear a, even a slightly smaller hair, I look like Wesley Snipes. So. <laughs> Good for you, Miss Plain. Yeah, mama. Who had your favorite look? For me? Like, so my favorite look would be something I would want to wear. Sure, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, 
I like Nymphia or Plain Jane, which is like two of the total opposites. Oh, okay. But I love the construction of Nymphias. Like the dress alone is just beautiful. Yeah. After judges' critiques, we find out the winner is Plain Jane. Do you agree? Yay! Yeah, she was she was consistent. You she know? was. In the bottom two are Morphine and Tsunami. Yeah. Do you think it's the right bottom two? Well, I mean, it's getting down to it, you know? It's like really nitpicky at this point. Tsunami and Morphine lip sync to I Wanna Dance With Somebody by Whitney Houston. Can you believe they've Come never on! done this? Come on! You're ready for it. Have you done this song? Uh, no. Actually, I did one of my first drag numbers when I was a little kid. Like, I'm older, so this is when MTV was actually playing music videos. But when I was a kid, my family used to be like, hey, get out here and start dancing for us. Like, they would make me do drag numbers for them. And it was I Wanna Dance With Somebody. Whitney Houston. So I don't know why they were acting crazy after I like told them I was a trans woman. You were, you're like, you're like I was like, oh, where did this come from? I'm like, exhibit A. Yeah. I love this lip sync. This is also a great karaoke song for people who can't sing at all. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good to know. Like, if you can't sing at all, pick something. Pick big. Okay. Ah, uh, what? Because then this is the type of song that no matter how bad you are, drunk you can people always do a clap. sing. Yeah, you can do it. And clap. the drunk people sing. Yeah. What do you think of the lip sync as it's unfolding? <sighs> Speaking of the clap. Yeah, I did see Tsunami do the clap. And I don't think for a lip sync for your life, you should be encouraging the crowd, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like you ran out of things to do. Yeah, as if the camera guys are gonna take their hands off the camera and be like, yeah, yeah girl. Yeah. Like, I mean, the girls in the back are clapping along because they're safe. Yeah, the girls in the back are like, is she clapping? Okay. And I think Morphine weirdly seemed ready to win the lip sync. You know, I think Morphine's drag performance personality. She's, you know, a sexy, you know, kitten. I think that worked. Because Morphine's so beautiful, mm -hmm. and I guess I shouldn't pre-decide how people are gonna lip sync. I thought she was gonna like walk around and be Right. So when she was doing splits and stuff, I was like, okay, yeah. bitch. Yeah, she's still a Miami girl. It is called I Want to Dance yeah. with Somebody. The House of Love, the House of Love with you on, honey. They're she's, she's amazing. Morphine wins, do you agree? Morphine wins. Yes, it was a good victory for her. Good job, Morphine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Which means sadly, I hate, oh, I hate it too, because I, I really it. like Tsunami. I love the girls. I love me some Tsunami. Like, Tsunami, you know in person she is devastating. Oh, we have so much fun in New York. Oh. She's like one of the girls. You know, we like the Brooklyn girls, the dolls, we have fun. I'm obsessed with her, and she's good to look at out of drag, which yeah. is also very welcome. And so sweet. So sweet. So sweet. She had a great run. So, Sasha, we're halfway through, and you are the queen with the crown. I am. Who can you imagine winning this season at this point? Oh, I mean, there's some strong ones. I love a Nymphia. I love Zafira. Mm. I mean, Plain Jane is great. And I really love Dawn. And I love Q. Oh my gosh, there's so many good girls. So you know there can't be six Q's winners. really good, I know. Okay. Okay, so then me. Perfect, let's just give her another check, people, shall we? You, you already have my info. Sasha, thank you so much for joining me today. You're about to go on tour, right? I am. I'm about to go on tour. February 28th is my first show, and we're doing 22 cities all across the greater North American area. And you can get your tickets on Ticketmaster.com. It's called Stripped, and it's a one-woman show of me just telling stories. Obviously, you know my drag, so there's a little bit of stripness in there. I will say, we know what sells. Sex sells. Yes. Are they gonna see some skin? They will see some stripped down skin for sure. For sure. If you come to a Sasha Colby experience, you know you're gonna get some skins. I hope it's just 90 minutes of just baby oil and like Sade. Oh my gosh. Rolling around. Simone. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and thank you for watching The Pit Stop. Join us next week when we tackle episode nine of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Bye. I'm obsessed with morphine. I can't yeah. take it. I just met her at a gig a few weeks ago and I was just like, I uh, know it just started, but your makeup <laughs> is just to die for. To die. How? And she was like, how is the season? She was like, how does plane come off? And I was like, I gotta go. I can't talk to you about this right now. <laughs>